Let's continue by setting up our routes and switches. More specifically, let's figure out what React Router DOM is and how we can use it to make our app a multi-page application. If you visit reactrouter.com, you should be redirected to the quick start guide. In here, you can see that we just have to install React Router DOM and we can immediately start using it with their first example, which is basic routing. So in this example, they have three pages handled by a router, a home page, about page, and a users page. We are going to have something similar to that. But let me just quickly explain how you can read these docs. You don't have to read absolutely everything. You can revisit this as a reference. So if you're searching for some basic guide, you can see what's happening here and then copy and modify the code. But if you're looking for something like redirection, Control F and then search for redirect. There we go. Immediately you can see one link there and one link there. So whatever you're searching for, keep in mind that there is a documentation page and use it as a reference. But if you're first using a piece of software like this one, then just go through it a bit and see what is it about. So in this case, we can just see that we need to have a few things imported from React Router. And also we have to wrap everything with the router variable from here, and then we can have different links or switches and routes inside of it. So let's go ahead and code that ourselves. Of course, I'm going to explain everything. The first thing we have to do is wrap everything with a React router. That way we'll be able to use different routes and switch between them. Usually that's done in the index.js. Inside of here, we can import something known as a browser router and that's coming from react-router-dom. Now, when I said we want to wrap everything, we basically need to wrap our application. So I'm going to put this into a new line. I'm going to put this into a new line as well. And let's simply wrap it with a browser router. There we go. And let's add a comma to the ending line right here. If you click save, ESLint should automatically format everything for you, and it should look something like this. We wrapped our app with a browser router. That now allows us to use the route and the switch inside of here. Now, instead of this H1, let's create a main div. As I've said, main is basically just a div, but it also has some meaning behind it, meaning that main part of our content is going to be inside of that exact div. Now, inside of that main, we're going to have a switch. A switch is a component coming from React Router DOM, which simply says that we can have different routes inside of it, and it's going to switch between those. So only one route is going to be visible at a time. That said, we need to have different routes. So let's create the first route inside of our switch. And that route needs to have a path. The path for the first one is going to be just forward slash. This is our home route. Now inside of our first route, we can render something like an H1 where we say home. Now I'm going to copy that part and I'm going to add the second path, which is going to be something like, let's do forward slash movies. And inside of there, we're simply going to say movies. Now, if we visit the link just forward slash, what do you think? Which heading are we going to see? Home or movies? Let's go ahead and start our application on localhost 3000 and check it out in the browser. As you can see, we currently see home because we are on the just forward slash route. But if we go to forward slash movies, we can also see home and not movies. Why is that? Well, the reason why is that switch is always going to trigger the first route that matches the starting point. So movies still starts with a slash, slash movies. So as soon as it starts, so as soon as it matches the starting line, it's going to go to here. If you want to fix that issue, you can add the exact path to each one. So now it's only going to trigger a route if the path is exactly matching this one here. Now, if you go back, it's movies, and then on just forward slash, it's going to be home. Now let's duplicate these two routes one more time. And let's change the first one to be forward slash movie forward slash and then colon ID. That means that if we go to forward slash movie, and then something like one two three, 
the ID is going to be populated as 123. And this is going to be our movie information. Then below that, we're going to have the actors page. So let's do actors and then forward slash ID. Also, make sure to put a colon right here. That's going to be actors. Then below that, we're going to have the movies. So that's going to be slash. We're immediately going to show all the movies on slash. And finally, the last route is going to be our profile page. So we can say forward slash profile and then forward slash colon ID. In that case, we want to show a profile. And with that, our basic routing is now fully done. Let's go ahead and save it and take a look in the browser. On localhost 3000, which is our homepage, we can see movies. If we go to forward slash profile and then forward slash any random set of numbers, you can see profile. If we go to movie and then any kind of random digit, you're going to see movie information. And finally, if we go to actor, or rather it's going to be actors, and then any set of random digits, you're going to get that specific H1. But we don't simply want to show a random H1. We want to show a new component for each one of these routes. So let's go ahead and create the basic file and folder structure for our entire application. We can do that by creating a few components inside of our components folder. And each one of these components is going to be a new folder, not just a file. So I'm going to right click new folder inside of the components folder. And the first component we need is going to be movie information. Inside of that movie information, we're going to have a movie information component, movie information dot JSX. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, what is the difference between .js and .jsx? There really isn't none. If you're using some kind of icon library, we're going to have the React icon if you use JSX. And also, it's just easier for me to keep track which files are React components and which ones are not. That's why I use .jsx for every single React component. Now, let's create it. Later on, we're going to add the styles for this file as well. But for now, we can simply create a basic component, which is going to be RAFCE. And then inside of there, we can say movie information. Great. Now, if we save it, it's immediately going to be transferred into a basic automatic return. But in this case, we don't want to do it because later on, we're going to have to add a lot of things inside of here. So now to trick ESLint not to automatically shorten it, we can simply add a console log here where we're going to say movie information. Great. Now we have our movie information component. What we can do is copy it and then let's create the other components that we're going to need. The second component is going to be a new folder called movies. Also a new file called movies.jsx. I think you can already notice the pattern. We have a folder with the same name as the component. In here, I'm simply going to paste everything. And now by holding Alt and then double clicking, we can simply change everything from movie information to be simply movies. We can also change this. And now you can copy that and we can go to our third component. Our third component is going to be actors. So let's create a new folder called actors. And let's create a new file called actors.jsx. Let's simply paste everything here. And again, by holding Alt and double clicking these words, we can change everything at the same time by simply specifying actors. The fourth component that we're going to need is going to be a profile page. So we can say profile and also new file profile.jsx. We can paste our code here and again, change the movies to be simply profile. And the final component that we're going to need is going to be the nav bar. So let's create a nav bar. I personally use an uppercase B, so you can use that. But if you use a lowercase, just make sure that you're sticking with the same thing. Now inside of there, let's create one new file and let's call it nav bar .jsx. Again, paste everything here and simply rename it to nav bar. With that said, we now have all of the main components that we're going to be using. There are going to be many more components, but these are the main ones. And you can know that because we're using them right here 
when we go to a specific route. So now the question is how we can import those components into our app. And we can do that by saying import. Now let's go with actors first from that's going to be dot slash actors and then forward slash actors. Now we can repeat this process five or six or seven more times and simply change the name to be something like nav bar. We can do one more, which is going to be for movie information. But again, as you can see, this is going to clutter our app.js and you don't want to do that. You want to keep your files clean. So there's a little trick that's going to allow us to import all of these in one line. And we can do that by simply adding a new file to our components folder called index.js. This index is going to serve the purpose of exporting all of the components from the components folder. And it works like this, export in brackets, default as, and then we can give it a name, something like actors, and from dot slash actors forward slash actors. There we go. Now we can duplicate this line a few more times. The second one is going to be for movie information. The third one is going to be for movies. The fourth one is going to be for navbar. And the last one is going to be for profile. There we go. Now we can go into our app.jsx and import all of these in one line. Let me show you how. Import in curly braces, actors, movie information, as well as movies, navbar, and finally profile. From, check this out, dot slash components or just dot slash because we're already in the components folder. That's it. This is how you import all the components in one line and you don't have to have many lines right there. There we go. So now we can make use of these components by simply rendering them inside of each specific routes. Instead of rendering an H1 with movie information, we can render the movie information self-closing component. For actors, we're going to do the same thing. That's going to be actors, which is a self-closing component. Same thing for movies. And finally, for the profile. There we go. And now you might be wondering, what are we going to do with navbar? Is navbar going to have the specific route as well? And the answer is no, because as I've mentioned, switch can only show one route at a time. And navbar is something that we always want to be visible. So what we can do is simply put the navbar above our switch and above our main, right here below the CSS baseline. That way, no matter on which route we are, we're always going to show the navbar and then the corresponding route. With that, as you can see, we're using all of the main components and we can check this out in the browser. Let's go to our Filmpar app and currently I'm going to zoom it in. We're on actors and you can see navbar and actors. Now let's try going to something like just slash and you'll be able to see navbar and then movies. Now I know that this is not flashy and it doesn't look good, but this is just the start and you've actually learned how to do routing in React. This is going to allow you to have multi-page applications and soon enough we're going to implement the links inside of the navbar so you don't have to manually change the routes by simply changing the URL. Now before we call it a day with this lecture, there's just one more tip I want to show you. And that is right now, if you have any kind of warning, not even an error in your application, ESLint is going to be extremely mean and tell you, no, you simply cannot have that even though it's not an error. Let me show you what I mean. If I comment out the navbar, we don't really have an error, right? We are not doing anything illegal in JavaScript or React, but ESLint says navbar is declared, but its value is never read, which means that you really shouldn't be importing this. And that's fine. ESLint is helping us here, but sometimes we're going to import some things just to use them later on. But take a look what happens if we go to the browser right now. We have an error saying navbar is defined but never used. And we cannot develop our application because this error is preventing us to. 
So what we can do is we can create a new special file called .env. Don't create it in the source folder, create it outside of everything in the root of your directory. Let's create a new file called .env. This is a special file where we're going to keep specific API keys. But also in here, you can say eslint underscore no underscore dev underscore errors. And we can set that to be equal to true. This way, we're not going to get eslint errors while developing an application. That's going to make this process a lot simpler. Now, whenever you change the .env, you have to restart your application. So simply press Ctrl C, Y, and then run npm start. This is going to start the application again. And now, even though we have a warning, we shouldn't really have an error. And there we go. Our application loaded. We don't have an error. We still do have a warning inside of here, which is great, but it's not preventing us from developing further. Now I'm going to bring this navbar back and we are ready to keep moving with the development process. See you in the next lecture.